This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're on. This is Think Tech. It's the two o'clock block. <clears throat> Business in Hawaii, and I'm uh, I'm standing in as the host today. I'm Jay Fidel, and we have two guests: uh, Tim uh, Arnes, Arns, Ames, Ames. Sorry, my handwriting, and uh, and John Strandberg. Tim is the CTO of Hawaii Tech Support, which is a profit corporation. Correct. And uh, John Strandberg is the sales the sales director uh, of that same company. Correct. But the interesting thing is this is not necessarily limited to that company. It's in, it involves nonprofit, um, nonprofit um, products, mm -hmm. services, management, computer management issues. Yes. On, on a sort of parallel basis, uh, related basis, right. with an entity called Nonprofit Tech. Yeah. Okay, so first tell me how you guys got involved in tech. Uh, what did what did you do for training? How did you get into the business, so to speak? Uh, you want to start, John? I have the easiest story. Back in 2000, I walked into a General Motors dealership with a laptop in my left hand, <laughs> and within six months, I said, "You're a new IT director because you own your own laptop." So that was my start in tech, and just kind of bloomed with it ever since. Okay. He was the guy there that knew how to log into a computer. Pretty so much. That made that him the, the number one important chief. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and uh, Tim, what, what, how about you? Uh, myself, I, I got started back when I was uh, young, in, in uh, a teenage years, so I got started with uh, radio communications. Um, ham radio? Ham, ham radio, right. yeah, I'm a, ham, okay, okay. I'm a ham radio operator. Uh, I graduated high school, went to straight into the Marine Corps, uh, did 10 years active duty Marine Corps, uh, communications uh, technology. Learned a lot that way. Learned a, oh, learned a lot more, uh, probably quicker than I should have in, in times. And uh, got out of the Marine Corps, uh, was a DOD civilian, uh, also working still with technology on, on some of the bigger uh, Navy Marine Corps contracts. Retired from the Hawaii Army National Guard as a uh, chief warrant officer. And uh, just I, I've just been doing technology. Uh, great so, fun. Yeah, great, time great time to do it. And, uh, you know, talking to my friends about this, you know, managed services is so important uh, to people. And, um, you know... You, you can say we got all these products and everything lives on the cloud and everything, but you still have to make it work. You do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people pull their hair out trying to make it work. So you help them. We help uh, them. Because, because essentially you are a managed support, uh, managed services uh, organization right. in Hawaii Tech Support. Yeah. So we, we provide uh, managed services for small and medium-sized businesses. That, that's our big wheelhouse right there is the folks that don't have an IT department or they may have an IT department, but... They don't have the deep bench strength. So smaller companies. Right. They, they, you know, when you get up to about 50 folks, then you start having an IT, dedicated IT staff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that dedicated IT staff becomes more of a logistics position than anything else. And we help fill in the bench strengths for security, uh, cloud computing. It's a big one. Nowadays. General strategy. General strategy. General strategy. Yeah, strategy. being that virtual CIO yeah. to take the vision of the organization and turn it into you know, some, something that, that transforms IT into, from a cost center, into something that helps with production. Well, you can make them or break them, really. I mean, you give them the secrets to the kingdom, mm -hmm. and uh, then they find that they can be profitable where they would not be otherwise. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. So you, you become critical for them. Right. We were having a conversation with, uh, um, actually, a director of uh, a local, uh, a national nonprofit, but the local branch here, and he was telling us when he was in insurance, he was the one... Uh, guy that learned how to do the SQL database, you know, that they had uh, all their customers on, and he learned how to do the secret, SQL queries. This was back in the day. This is 20, 25 years ago. And that was his secret sauce, you know, just, just being able to quickly generate reports. And he would tell his customers, you know, yeah, I could, I could do that for you. Oh, it sounds really tough. And then he'd, he'd spit it out in a, you know, an hour, and he'd deliver it to the customers, and that was their secret sauce, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty cool. It wouldn't work today. Yeah, everybody knows a secret. Now. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, okay, how old are you? I mean, the company. The company's going to be 15 years and just turned 15, actually. 50, wow. Okay. 15, yeah. Now, somewhere along the line, uh, you got the idea that there are a lot of nonprofit products out there. You should have a sort of parallel company. Well, it started off because we started working with more and more nonprofits in the last five years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we support some of the larger nonprofits here in Hawaii now, and it's just, oh, they didn't hear about half the products that we're bringing bringing into them. Uh, like TechSoup, a couple of nonprofits we worked with from the beginning had never heard of it. So with TechSoup, you get reduced price for um, 
software, in a lot of cases hardware as well. And they, wow. they just never heard of it. And here we are showing them this manna from heaven because you get everything pennies on a dollar. Yeah. For instance, Microsoft products, two bucks. Yeah. Right. So, and, and the thing is, for an ordinary nonprofit, smaller is probably more accentuated. For an ordinary nonprofit, you don't know. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. And if you said to somebody in the staff, "Go find out for me where the where the bennies are," you know, where I can get special mm -hmm. deals from organizations that support nonprofits, that's a major research effort. You'd have to go scouring the net all over the place to find out that stuff. So, but even then, what you find on the internet is not true. Ah or it's not available in Hawaii. Ah, mm -hmm. So here we are, we came in and said, let's go find how we can help. Because we support a lot of nonprofits from a business standpoint and as individuals. We both belong to various boards and organizations. They're like, how can we help? And this became nonprofit. So is, this, is a, this, is an, this is why we're here today to discuss right. the nonprofit end of what you do. Yeah. yeah, and like John said, you know, we identified a problem and the problem wasn't that these nonprofits didn't have the resources available. It's one, they didn't know how to how to locate those resources. Or two, it, it's kind of like, you know, there's there's a lot of organizations that will take uh, old laptops and old computers, refurbish them, and then make them available to nonprofit organizations. But I, I kind of I kind of liken it to um, in some of the uh, developing nations where they'll get hundreds of thousands of you know, cast off Super Bowl shirts because they were printed up for both teams. Well, one team didn't win the Super Bowl, so those <laughs> shirts get shipped off. And now you've got an entire nation running around with, you know, old Super Bowl shirts, but they just don't know what to do with this stuff, right? Same thing with uh, nonprofit co companies. They'll get a bunch of technology. How do you use it? You know, what good is it? Is it causing more of a burden to the company to get this stuff than it's actually worth? And so what we're trying to do is is tell companies, you know, give us your give us your business. Give it, tell us what your business is. Let us align a strategy, an IT strategy that coincides with what you're trying to do as an organization. What's awesome about nonprofits is I don't care if I'm a huge supporter of the cause or what, everybody in nonprofits trying to help, right? So if we can give back and help them do their mission, hey, that that's what it's all about. You know, we help them do it right, we help develop a strategy, and then we, we look at these clearinghouses like TechSoup, you know, where, where, a lot of non where a lot of organizations like Microsoft, Amazon, Cisco. Are giving things away. Are mm -hmm. giving things away, and we say, look, here's all the stuff they're giving away. You don't need 90% of this, but the 10% you need is available. Here's how you get it, and here's how you don't waste your money. Even if it's just a little bit of money, you know, pennies on the dollar, you still don't want to waste it. You know, you have a mission or your support time. or your time. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this is really a, a, a matching arrangement. Mm -hmm. you, you have to find out what they need. Yeah. Even if they don't know, you find out what they need. Mm -hmm. And then you find out what's available as, as freebies mm -hmm. out there by organizations that like to give freebies to right. nonprofits. And, and then you put them together. Yes. And now you have magic because nobody's wasted time and, and they have a much better system than they had a little while ago. Um, well, I'd like to examine, though, uh, you know, where this, where this fits with you guys. In other words, um, you, have, you have two parts to the business. One mm -hmm. is the regular managed services part, which doesn't necessarily involve nonprofit uh, companies or nonprofit uh, products. Um, and then you have the nonprofit organization. So, how, how do you work with each other? Is it a two headed kind of thing? It, it do, really do you, is. Do you talk to each other? Or do you talk to yourself? Sometimes way too much we talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more of we see the need for the nonprofit. So, we have the nonprofit arm to support, get them up and running, use the services that are available. But then the for profit end, we step in after. Now that you have everything set up and in place, now you have to be concerned about cybersecurity updated training, okay. managing your actual systems now that you have. So that's where the for-profit steps in and says, we can do all this. So or the, we marry you with somebody else. When you get um, some kind of nonprofit benefit, uh, some kind of special arrangement, say, for Microsoft, mm -hmm. um, you don't get it for the profit company. You get it for the nonprofit company. And you, pa am I right? And you pass it through 
to the other nonprofits. When it comes to the nonprofit stuff, we want to keep that very separate. We yeah. want to keep our yeah. governance and compliance, you know, on the up and up. Yeah. We're not we're not trying to create any conflict of interest. Yeah. Um, in Hawaii, it's it's unique because we started the nonprofit foundation. Yeah. We're also a for-profit managed service provider. Right. We don't want to be the only person in the game helping out the nonprofits in Hawaii. We would love for other managed service providers to get in contact with us, and we're working on making that happen. Uh, we want to vet other service providers, whether they're one or two person shops or bigger entities like ourselves, you know, with 20, 20 folks on staff that can provide 24 7 help desk mm. uh, support. We want to get other uh, entities involved so that folks have a choice uh, of who they use as a managed service provider. We also want to take this nationwide and eventually globally to where we're, we're vetting the service providers and we're saying, look, deal through us, let us refer you these folks because we've already checked, we've already checked your, 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 uh, your services out. We know you're up on the up and up. You're gonna be around for a while. We're mm -hmm. doing due diligence. But yeah, we don't want to be the only ones in the game. And there is there so is you have the nonprofit that we're there. talking about, the nonprofit entity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which yes. is actually a nonprofit corporation. Right? Correct. Yeah. Um, would would deal with not only you as as uh, Hawaii tech support, mm -hmm. but other tech support companies in Hawaii. Am I right? About oh, for that? sure. Yeah. yeah. Very much. Yeah. So so it's, if I drew it out, the uh, the. The nonprofit would be in the middle of a lot of managed Correct. service organizations. Yeah, ideal, ideally, ideally, that's where we want to be. Yeah, and, and we're just we're just going to give advice to the nonprofit, fo you know, the uh, nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. to to say, look, we'll get you up and running for practically free. You know, it's 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 close to free as you can. You know, based on what you'll have to pay in the end. You know, sixteen dollars for a Windows Server license versus twelve hundred, for example. So there's a little cost on some of this stuff. But we'll get you up and running. How you keep up and running? You can hire an IT person. You can, you or know, you can come to you. You can come to us, or, or someone go else. through our referral. So program. you're not really competing with the other. Well, you're not you're not changing the model of competition. Sure. You, you you'd be in the field of managed support services. Mm -hmm. um, so would other people. Yes. Uh, the only thing that's common is you have this nonprofit organization, which is which is really mm, in a good place mm -hmm. to find the nonprofit benefits. Correct. And to share them. Yeah. So my question um, before the break is, how is the nonprofit entity compensated for its contribution to this formula? If they, if a, if an organization, an MSP, goes through the vetting process and they seem like a good fit and somebody that's going to support our nonprofit communities, um, there will be a referral. Uh, you know, we'd expect a referral fee to be in place to support the nonprofit on NP technology, because nonprofits is not our only, uh, it's not our only mission. Uh, right, right. Uh, in addition to that mission, we also want to uh, support STEM education for our oh, Hawaii yes. students. You guys are really very eleemosynary for the common good, yeah. and altruistic. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, the funny thing is when we support STEM technology, we want to be able to build labs that, that kids can actually get into and just be like regular IT folks doing their day to day. And we're going to build that in those places like Amazon, you know, web services in Microsoft Azure to give these kids a real world experience of managing real services. Okay, so the, the, the way the nonprofit is compensated, because it needs to have some income in order to stay alive. Mm -hmm. You know, any entity, nonprofit or profit, has to have some income to stay alive, whether it's a contribution, tar tax free, charitable contribution or otherwise. It sounds like to me, just what from what you said, that it's, it's a referral fee. Mm -hmm. It's a referral fee um, by the organization, whether it's you or somebody else, uh, like Hawaii Tech Support, the managed service provider mm -hmm. is going to pay a referral fee back to the nonprofit for its assistance in arranging these nonprofit right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I figure it's and a win-win. Yeah. yeah. It's sure. just one model. The other one is contributions from viewers like you. Which <laughs> we're open to. <laughs> Which we you also do that. We would be starting that as well. Uh, Tim and I both have a lot of board experience. So we're mm -hmm. good at asking for money. Grants are available out there for what we're going to be doing, and it's not just from Hawaii grantors. So, okay, we did oh. our due diligence and did some research. Okay, I want to take a break now, but when we come back, I'd like you to get more specific about exactly what benefits are out there and exactly what kind of clientele are interested in those benefits. Perfect. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness.
For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Yeah, thinking about what you guys were saying before, and that's Tim Ames and John Strandberg of uh, Hawaii Tech Support and also Nonprofit Tech, two related companies that uh, do nonprofits, uh, nonprofit benefits for nonprofit companies. Um, you know, nonprofits are hard because, you know, you, you don't make it up in volume, mm -hmm. you lose it in volume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and unless you have some kind of cash flow, yeah. you, can't, you can't continue. And really, uh, there are some sad stories out there about very high minded nonprofits that went out of business. Uh, and I think that one of the threads about that phenomenon here in Hawaii is that they never got their administrative act together. They weren't able to write a letter. <laughs> you know, you got to write a letter. Yeah. You got to keep files. You got to be able to communicate with, you know, your organizational components. And if, if you can't do that, you're not going to succeed either as a profit or a nonprofit. As you said in the break, John, nonprofits are businesses too. Uh, and and you know they they you've got to do all the things you've got to do for it's an, like a running a business, business exactly to be a nonprofit business. So you guys are enabling, uh, you know, eleemosynary organizations to actually continue in business. This is a great gift to them and to the community because by definition they're helping the community. There's a lot of volunteers out there. Um, this is a great contribution to the community, you know, effort. So I guess my question is. What you, you alluded to this earlier, mm -hmm. what kinds of products and benefits are available that this the hypothetical small nonprofit um, doesn't know about, which it could use? Just you don't, you don't have to give away the secrets. Oh, I, I don't mind. No, this, this, is, this is why I'm here. I want to give away the secrets. I want folks to know about it. On, now, the challenge isn't so much as what's available. It's almost like what's not available in the technology uh, sector uh, that technology companies don't offer. So Adobe is a, a good example. Adobe Creative Cloud with the, you know, the Photoshop and all that can be quite, very quite powerful, expensive. Very powerful, important program. Very powerful, very the important. The subscription model makes it very expensive. It does. So if you go through TechSoup, for example, and you purchase a license, an Adobe Creative Cloud license with all of the apps enabled, uh, it's $5 a year. How much? Five dollars a year for, for one seat. For one seat. Oh, well, one seat that can handle up to two concurrent. We have uh, to talk after the show. We do. <laughs> Tim. So that's a that's a good example. Another great example is uh, web services. So every uh, organization is going to have a website now, some kind of landing page with a donate button. You know, especially around the holiday seasons, because this is the big drive. This is the big push for nonprofits to get their message out there. Mm -hmm. People are in the giving mood. Right. Okay. It's also end of year. Soliciting so. contributions, <laughs> right. doing fundraising. Yeah. And get that last uh, charitable contribution in before tax season ends. Well, how do you get the message out there? Uh, Google offers $120,000 a year in matching uh, ads credits. Okay, so what that means is you're able to get your message out there. Uh, Amazon Web Services offers $2,000 a year in free web hosting. Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure does something similar, about $3,500 a year. And uh, Microsoft has also made it their mission to bring on board, I believe they said, 8,000 uh, new uh, nonprofits in this, in this uh, model, right? Because they, they want that, they want that. They want to become what uh, Google and Amazon are yeah. to, go, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to nonprofits. And I think that's a very important message. So when you use these cloud, when you leverage these cloud credits and you're able to host somebody's website for free, you know, if you're able to host somebody's desktop environment for free, a remote desktop environment. What's, it's, what's the catch? Well, it, the catch you know, whenever is, something sounds too yeah. good to be true, you have to look carefully. Well, the catch is it's, it's usually these uh, multi-billion dollar organizations that are doing this. 
So you're not going to find a lot of the one-off uh, software companies that do very specialized stuff. You're not going to often find them doing um, uh, charitable donations. So there may be some software out there or some uh, specialized hardware that you just can't get through this, these types of programs. The other catch is, um, like I said, it's, it's going to be dumped on your, on your desk. If you go directly through Microsoft or you go directly through Amazon, you're going to get the... The, the products, but then you're stuck with the what problem of how to set that? it up. Yeah, how do you make it work? So it, it sounds to me like one of the golden rule here is you, you really can't take advantage of these opportunities in, in any you know coordinated, cohesive way unless you have a managed service provider of some kind mm -hmm. who helps you find them uh, and also helps you use them. Uh, otherwise, you're spinning your, your wheels and, and killing your well, time. Think of it this way. It's like having a carpenter with a box of tools that doesn't use his tools. You, you have them all, you carry around with you. Yeah. But until you actually use that hammer and that saw, it's it's carried around with you. Yeah. You've got that in your belt. Yeah. So this is really important to have this connection. Right. So do you, do you ever refer clients to other managed service providers or you allow the, or you let them find their own? How does that work? Are you, you're in a kind of galaxy of, of um, right. managed service providers. Well, as Hawaii Tech Support, there are certain things that we do not do. Uh, so we don't, uh, for example, we Very don't good. do web, website development. Yeah. Um, we partner with other, we, we have partners to, to send those referrals to, and, and for no, no cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we just, we like the, the work that some of these folks do, and we yeah. refer them on that basis. Uh, there's some other things that we don't do. Uh, because uh, you know how it is, IT is very specialized, and to be very more good at more. something, um, you, you have to not focus on other things. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there, there's cases where, where that would happen. Um, there's other, uh, you know, for example, if somebody comes to us from California, we're going to have a difficult time supporting them remotely if there's the need for somebody to be on site. Not say it can't happen um, through the use of smart hands, but we prefer that they make a partnership or a relationship with a local provider in their area. And that's where we come in to say, let's look at your strategy. Let's look at what you need to survive as a as an organization, as a nonprofit organization, and let's find the let's find that provider so that you, meets your specifications. That's very nice of you to do yeah. that. Yeah. So you're full service in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I was going to I was going to ask you, John, about um, who are the people, the companies, the nonprofits, essentially, that you're serving. Um, what, what is the landscape about nonprofits out now? Um, what, what are they doing? How are they doing? What kinds of activities are they engaging in? Who's the market you're appealing to? Right now, we're, as a company, we're appealing to like that mid-level market where it's, um, they're at, they're beyond a startup as a nonprofit because nonprofits go through a life cycle. There's the national companies, then there's the local nonprofits, but these are more the uh, getting to be in the mature stage. And they're realizing, oh, the technology we received 15 years ago is still being used and we're not keeping up. So we're engaging those types of nonprofits. Because they don't, they don't have the inside expertise. Right, so they... So you can bring that to them. So usually what happens is you start off with a five-person office. A volunteer comes in, has all the expertise, sets them up 10 years ago. And a lot of these nonprofits are still operating in a 10-year mode. The, the computers are still there. I came across one recently where they were still running Windows XP because that's what was set up for them and they never changed, it just continued to work. And their, their model is very set in stone because they've never adapted to the new technologies. Well, that's, that's, that's true because when you get in there and you consult and when you offer them these benefits, um, especially when they're stuck in something, you know, they, they, they're using old technology, they haven't really stepped up, um, you're going to change the way they do business. Absolutely. It's not just computers, it's everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? It's to the point where I've come across a lot of nonprofits where they're operating as if it's early 2000. Yeah. And technology has leapfrogged them by decades almost, and they're just starting to come through and go, we need to actually move our emails off of this free stuff from Yahoo or, or whatever it was back in the day. Someone used Hotmail as their primary email for a business once. Mm -hmm. That scared me. Yeah, if, I, if, I'm clicking, if I'm clicking on a, a link that's going to say, donate money to uh, Joe Schmo at hotmail.com, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to think twice about whether, you know, continue. Yeah, you're, you're a savvy donor. Email must want be that. a big issue for these companies. Big it, it is. Yes. 
I mean, and, and I'm sure you find a lot of them that are not handling it very well. Yeah. And, and Jay, what, what would you say if I, I said that if a 25 or less, you know, 25 percent or less office should not be paying anything for their email, and that includes having a professional uh, domain name. So, for example, instead of Joe Schmo at Hotmail.com, it's Joe Schmo at, you know, Hot nonprofit.com or whatever it is, you know, that should be something that, that you know, fits into their, their marketing, right. their, their image, their, you know, their persona of who they are so that when I'm thinking of this person, I'm thinking of the, the nonprofit technology and that, you know, it fits into their, their strategy. So yeah. nonprofits are a brand. If mm -hmm. they don't brand themselves online properly, sure. they're going to lose donors. They're going to lose volunteers. Yeah. So without the proper branding that we can support them with, they could fail. And we don't want to see nonprofits fail. No, it's bad for everybody. It is. And you want to encourage them. We should all encourage them. Um, one other thing is, uh, you know, so nonprofits are always looking for money, always trying to find fundraising. I can tell you about that. Um, what What is your favorite kind of computer software? To do that, managing fundraising. So well, I'm I'm pretty. Uh, I'm we're. We're very vendor agnostic, um, but a lot of folks have had success going straight with uh, things like Razor's Edge. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty popular one. There's, um, if you're just going with like the donation buttons, and if you if you actually use a, you know a nuts to bolts um, productivity system like Microsoft uh, Office with Power BI and all of that stuff with the Dynamics 365 CRM. So if you're actually incorporating all this. It's really the sky's the limit on what you want to do um, as far. Biggest thing though is getting that you know getting that donate button on your website to work, <laughs> yes. or you know making sure that when you send out the emails that you're you're able to point them to a landing page like ours for example nptechnology.org. It's a it's it's set up using a you know our nonprofit subscription and it's set up uh, as a landing page using all free stuff. But it, it's it's well done. You know it's mm -hmm. it's using WordPress. It's using all the latest stuff. And if a nonprofit could just get to that point where they could just have a donate button, I think that's fine. Now the CRM, the the customer relationship management, that that's a whole, you know, that that's a whole. There's uh, well, lots of companies out there that, to do yeah. that. So you you make a strategy, mm -hmm. uh, you put a, a, a nonprofit in in contact with, uh, you know, a, a Microsoft say it's going to offer them a CRM or whatever mm -hmm. kind of software at a, at a good rate or for free. Um, it's, it doesn't end there, though. That, that's what I wanted to ask you. It doesn't end there. Because a lot, a lot of these small companies, it won't end there for them. They, they're going to have, a, they're gonna, it's like the, uh, the guppy swallowing the whale. Um, they gotta, they got to be taught. they got to yeah. be trained. All their people have to be taught and trained. They have to build, re, renew their whole operation around the new software. It, it, it's definitely a culture shift with a lot of nonprofits. It, so are you going to participate in that culture? We actually help You're going to go down there and we show them the way? We facilitate change and show them this is how things are being done today based on these technologies. This is how it correlates back to what you've been doing, mm -hmm. and this is the steps you get there. We can't change culture. We can't change people overnight, but enough interaction will get us to that point. Yeah. And let me talk about our secondary mission as MP Technology. Our secondary mission, on, on you know, in addition to helping the nonprofits with their technology needs, is to train our next generation of uh, technologists. So uh, nonprofit and otherwise, nonprofit yeah. and otherwise, otherwise. But you know, it, though it's it's folks like us that you know are doing this full time as technology experts that have the time or the wherewithal to go help the nonprofits uh, in a very quick and, and effective fashion. Um, if we can train up the next level of folks to do that, it, get to the high schools, get to the colleges, make sure that they have the wherewithal to yeah. to provide services, then as they come become successful, as we you know as they can intern with these nonprofits to to support them, or you know and they become successful um, in their own careers, they yeah. can go back and help. Oh, them. this is very noble and very important. It's a uh, actually I. You know, I'm giving a talk in the next few weeks about this very subject. Mm -hmm. oh, right. So we have to talk some more. Yes. So as a company, we every chance we get to help with a STEM project at a school, we're yeah. there. Yeah. Couple Lake because reached out, we're out there. It's about making people yes. literate, making kids literate. Yeah. So, okay, have we covered the future? Because if not, then I have to ask you my last question. What's in the future for you guys? What do you see? You can give me the keys to the kingdom now. Right. Right. Uh, what are you planning to do? Well, we, we want to go from um, 
we want to get a really good uh, base of supported Hawaii nonprofits, and then we want to take this uh, nationally and then eventually go globally because it doesn't, you know, Hawaii is great. Hawaii has a lot of nonprofit needs. Um, as you go across the nation, across the world, um, the needs shift, but the needs are always there. there there's always a need for folks, folks to help each other out. So that's where we want to get to. It's a, it's great. a great model for other MSPs like us to follow or assist in their nonprofits, their own community. Great. So we're, we want to start that here and have it just grow with the lowest spirit, as right. it were. Yeah. And it'll always be relevant. Exactly. You know, the circumstances that you've described yeah. are going to stay that way and increase. Technology's not going away. No, it's not it's going away. more complicated. Nonprofits aren't going away. Freebies by you know, big companies, they're, they're, and, and people who need training, they're not going away. Right. In fact, they're growing. In fact, in other continents, who knows where, they are growing as we speak. Yeah, and I, I really feel like there's this big, this big surge um, over the last decade or so, um, especially as, as the younger kids what, what referred to as millennials, but you know, we refer to them as people that are, are grown up with the idea that it's good to help people. And so as, as these people are getting into the workforce and they're starting their own organizations, I want to make sure that the helpers are getting the help that they need. Tim Ames, John Strandberg. Thank you. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you. All the best on this great venture. Awesome. Terrific. Aloha. Aloha.